I understand that last year we celebrated the 40th anniversary of the Gill Man. How do you feel about that? Older. Older. What <laughs> age were you when you started the film? 21. And do I dare ask what age you are now? Well, you can figure it out. <laughs> okay, no, 40 I'm years? 62. You look very, very well for 62. Well, thank you. How did you first get involved with Universal Studios? Um, with this film. The yes, creature. with the creature. Yeah. Um, that's the first show I did with it. Uh -huh. And how did you first get involved with them? Did you uh, like uh, go on an open casting call no, for no, stuntmen? No, no, no. Or? Uh, the director and the cameraman uh, came to Florida to look for locations for the film. Uh -huh. And a friend of mine who used to manage Wakala Spring uh -huh. called me and said he couldn't take these people to show them the area. And I was going to Florida State University at the time and said, would you mind doing it for me? And I said, sure, I'd be glad to because I used to work for him at Wakala Spring. I took them to Wakala Spring, showed them the location, they loved it, and they said, would you mind swimming in front of the camera? Because we need some perspective of the size of the you know, logs uh -huh. and the bottom and so forth. I said, sure, so I did. That was the very first venture in the film then? In that film, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, uh, uh, a couple of weeks later, uh -huh. uh, I get a phone call from Jack Arnold, who was the director, he says, hey, you want to be the creature? I said, yeah, why not? Uh -huh. He said, we liked your style of swimming, because uh -huh. that was the natural way I swim. It hadn't, I didn't create a thing for the creature. And so that was the beginning. I went to L.A., and we started making outfits for the part. And they made one outfit, which wasn't very attractive, uh -huh. as far as everyone was concerned. Attention they viewers, jumped that, and they started the a second one. Uh -huh. And then they accepted that one. Did you have any input as far as how the creature would basically look in the end? No, only the only input I had is as far as my swimming ability in the outfit, uh -huh. that I tried to get them to stiffen the feet so that I could use them similar to a swim fin. However, they, they didn't get it really stiff enough, but it did help. Had you won uh, possibly awards in swimming in your earlier years? In I swam on an Air Force swimming team, and mm -hmm. I won a few awards. But that's the only per, only um, competitive swimming I ever did. Other than that, I was all for pleasure. Were you apprehensive about swimming in that suit, which I imagine no. was pretty heavy? No. It was very lightweight, or no, no, I wasn't apprehensive. Uh -huh. is what I'm uh, it was heavy when you were on land, and it was wet. It was buoyant in the water when you were in the water and you had to wear lead weights uh -huh. on a chest and thighs and feet to keep you down because you floated you, uh -huh. know, you know rubber like a like a wetsuit uh -huh. how much uh, movement were you able to have as far as flexing and bending with a, a great deal great deal of movement. let me ask you this question uh, a lot of people very ignorantly and i'll say very ignorantly compare swamp thing with the creature from the black lagoon does that irritate you I have no idea. I never saw the Swamp Thing. You never saw Swamp no, Thing? so huh? I don't know. What kind of a man was Jack Arnold? Great guy. I did a number of pictures with him. What's well, some uh, of the other films that you did with him? Hello Down There. I don't know if you recall the people living yeah, in Yeah, I did. Tony Down Curtis, there. wasn't it? No, it was uh, the guy, the odd couple. Yeah. Yeah, Tony Randall. Yeah. Tony Randall. Yeah. yeah. And it was Richard Dreyfuss, one of his first films. Now, you were in the original Creature. Were you in the two sequels? Yes. All three of them? Yes. Which one was your favorite? The first one first one the reason they spent more money uh -huh. and did a better job and you said that you considered that basically a B movie which of course it was but yeah it that's was. basically what you thought of it as was a cheaply made well it's like uh, I put it like uh, uh, it's like you go to work in the morning at the bank uh -huh. and you do your job as a teller and you go home when you did your job, you go home, you forget about it. Uh -huh. Well, the same thing in the film business. You did a movie, you go home, you forget about it. And uh, it was just another job. Let so, me ask you this. One would think that doing something like that could possibly be dangerous in some spots. Was there any mishaps or close calls? No. Um, we were very careful about safety. Uh -huh. I had at least four safety men in every scene I did two to look out for me to help me get to the surface if necessary, the other two carrying air hoses so that I could get air when I needed it. Uh -huh. And uh, we had signals between each other as to when I needed air and so forth. And we never had a problem. There were some difficult times when I was a distance away from the safety net, but uh, I was able to manage the scenes okay. How difficult uh, 
was movies like Hello Down There compared to The Creature? Did you say The Creature was the most difficult to do because of the suit? Well, it's, you're talking about two different things. Yeah. Uh, I was a stuntman yeah. when I was doing The Creature of the Black Lagoon. That was stunt work. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I did Hello Down There, I was a director. I did all the second unit directing on that film. Yeah. The underwater sequences and so forth. And I had other people who were doubling the actors in that show. How was so Lori we, Nelson uh, to work with? Great. Was she a good person? Yeah, great gal. Great, great, easy to work with. Let me with. ask you this. How difficult was the process of filming in 3D, which was pretty new back then in the There 50s? was no difficulty as far as the acting part or the swimming part or, or, or that nature. None, none at all. The, the, the difficulties came in the camera work as far as the cameraman was concerned. Uh, they flooded the camera one time at Wakala Springs, but were able to fix it in a couple of days. Um, some of the scenes were designed, you know, for 3D uh -huh. because, you know, you wanted something coming at camera. And uh, we had to work on those particular scenes, like shooting the gun and so forth, so that it was playing to the camera. Did you ever out into the audience. have a desire, since you were basically behind a mask in that film and, and so forth, uh, to have a part to where you were seen? I did. You did? Okay, yeah. what was that? It was, I mean, it's not much of a part. In the first creature. I was in the lab taking blood out of a shark. Oh really? Yeah. I didn't know that. But I, mean, I, I just did it because I needed somebody in that day. I mean, now, you had mentioned about Wakala Springs and that and that's how you got involved with that. Was the creature the first film work you did? No, we did, uh, I used to do, I, I mean it was before your time, it was called Grantland Rice Sports Films. Okay. We did a number of those, all dealing of course either with diving, you know like high diving, mm -hmm. board diving, or uh, underwater or water oriented shows and um, then as a kid when I first started working in the water at Wakala Springs we used to do I don't know if you remember uh, it was before television uh -huh. they would have newsreels yes I and see that. at the end of each new reel they'd have a little funny thing uh -huh. something about monkeys or something yeah. about something well we used to do a lot of little episodes for the newsreel companies underwater on the surface of the water that were funny or cute uh -huh. and, uh, those kinds of why do you think that they don't make the kind of films today like they used to make back in the 50s, like The Creature and so on? Everything's basically blood and guts now, you know? Well, I guess, I, I mean, I can only say yeah. my opinion. is I guess that's what sells. Mm -hmm. uh, people go see it, and they pay their money to see it. Now, whether a show like The Creature with subtle violence and other shows, uh, whether that would sell today or not, I don't know. Uh, I guess you'd have to make one to see do you think the creature had a message in it like about ecology? And no, I don't think it did at all. A lot of people try to read that in. No, I don't think it had. It, just, it was a movie to make money, and uh, the script was written, but it had nothing to do with ecology. Yeah. Have you ever had a chance to go to the Universal Parks? Universal uh, I went Studios? to uh, Universal when they first opened, or first getting ready to open, mm -hmm. here in Orlando. But they had not completed the park, mm -hmm. and uh, I met the manager, Norman Rice, I believe. And he showed us around a little bit, but they hadn't completed it. So we, but I haven't been back since. I wish they. I love the place, and I wish they'd pay more homage to the classic. Yeah. Universal, because they're more like modernized and everything now. Yeah. How did you get involved with Flipper? Uh, when I was at Silver Springs, I worked in public relations some years back, and I remember back in school where I read about freshwater dolphins. There's some in the Yangtze River in China, some in the Amazon and other places. And as a publicity stunt, we were going to go capture freshwater dolphin out of the Amazon and bring them back to Silver Springs because they could live in fresh water. So we did. It's another story. But well, we brought back several, and uh, I was sort of in charge of them. And I became friendly with them and became pets. And uh, during that time, my children were young and they used to watch Lassie. Yeah. And one day I was at home with them and they were watching Lassie and I got the bright idea, not just from this, but from uh, Grecian, not really history, but uh, myths or whatever, about a boy riding a dolphin. Mm -hmm. And I thought, well, why not a boy and a dolphin as opposed to a boy and a doll? Yeah. So with my then brother-in-law who was a radio announcer we wrote the story Flipper and uh, I tried went to New York tried to sell the project as a book I had two companies interested but I went home and I didn't hear from them and uh, 
I wasn't doing too well financially at the time, but I had just finished working with Ivan Torres on a show called Sea Hunt. I was an underwater director, second unit director. And uh, I called Ivan and I said, Ivan, will you do me a favor? Will you say, would you say you consider a project I'm doing as a movie? He said, yeah, I'll do that. He said, but send me a copy. I mailed him a copy. And then I called the book company and I said, hey, uh, what are you guys doing? I got a Hollywood producer interested in maybe making this in the movie. I was going to try to see if that would egg them on. However, it didn't. But about a week later, I get a call from Ivan. He says, Rico, you want to make a movie? And I said, yeah. He says, we're going to do Flipper. So he then went into with MGM. We signed a contract with Ivan, and we did the first Flipper feature. Then we did a second one, and we did four years of total. Boy, you must have really had a charmed life. You make it sound like it was so easy. No, no, that, none of it know. was easy. Yeah. It was a pretty long period of time then. That oh, yeah. Uh, as an example, when we wrote Flipper, it was five years before it was done. Mm. It took five years. I did a show called Salty uh, about a sea lion. I took the sea lion as a baby, brought it in my home, kept it for three years, and trained it. And then I wrote the story, Salty, with my brother-in-law, Jack. And uh, we then got financing out of New York, and we made a feature called Salty. That took seven, another seven years. So these things, don't you just don't think of them and do yeah. them. It takes a while. I hear they're remaking Flipper. Uh, do you know anything about that? Yeah, but I don't want to talk about it. There's but are you involved in any way? I don't want to talk about it. Oh, okay. Uh, on Flipper, the episodes of TV, you were the director on that, too, weren't on you? Which? Some episodes on the Flipper uh, TV Oh, series? yeah, I, did, I, I directed lots of movies. I directed General Ben, I directed Sion, I got to where I grew That's what Wh I Which do, do you like most, being a stuntman, a uh, bit like player actor, or directing all I like of it all. Why don't you think they make shows like that anymore? I asked I you about no the idea. horror films, and let me ask you about the family type. I, I guess it doesn't sell. Yeah. People don't go, it's, I give an example, when we did Salty, I think it's as good a film as Flipper was. Uh -huh. And we went out promoting it, and um, uh, we went to, uh, Matter of fact, we were in Orlando. I was then in Fort Lauderdale. And I got a bright idea that I'd call all the women's clubs and invite them over to this motel to look at the film so that they could promote it as a family film. Right. They called these different places and maybe five people showed up to see the film for nothing. Uh -huh. But that morning, we were eating breakfast and the police came in and uh, came right up to our table. And they said, yeah, that looks like him pointing at my son, who was working with me. Yeah. And they and they said, yeah, that looks like the description. And we said, what's going on here? Hey. And they said, well, some lady called us and said, you called her yesterday about coming to see a movie, and then she was robbed. Oh, geez. So she says, that boy with the stash looks kind of like the guy. I said, hey, wait a minute. Anyway, it was all straightened out. Yeah. But my point was, uh, today's world is so different, yeah. is what I mean. And anyway, the picture did not make a lot of money. And it was a G-rated film. Kids and adults don't go to G-rated films except Disney. Yeah. And if people would go see them, people would make them. But they're not going to make them because they don't make money. You they still? Money. Uh, excuse me. Go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead. That's all. Do you still ever see some of the cast of Flipper today? Oh yeah. Them? Yeah. I understand Luke that lives one, here. Yeah, one of them lives. Yeah. Here. And Tommy uh, uh, Norton, the other boy, lives in New York. Mm -hmm. And uh, Brian Kelly is in L.A. And uh, Brian and I are very close friends. I talk to him frequently. He's a great guy. Yeah, he is. Yeah. And uh, some of the directors and I became close friends, and one of them in particular. And the production manager and I are very good friends. And he comes down every year. The girl, Cheryl Miller, she was great. Yeah. She, she was, was in a lot of the episodes. Yes, too. correct. She did a lot of Dottari, another show yeah. I haven't did. But Cheryl, I did two shows with her. What was it like for you to have guest stars in Flipper like Hunts and all? Oh, great. I, Hunts and I became very good friends. And Hunts was a little, you know, he was worried about the Everglades. And we had his secret, his show was done. All Not an ocean show. type guy then. Yeah. Uh, but he was a professional and just waited right in, no problem. Very nice man. You've basically been a Floridian all your life. Yeah, born in Fort Pierce. I lived in a little place called Jensen Beach, where my family is all from. And uh, I moved to Tallahassee, went to high school there, went to college there at FSU. I didn't finish, but I went for a couple of years. And then lived in Miami and Fort Lauderdale. Are you concerned that when people think of you, they think mostly of uh, centering on the creature in Black Lagoon? You've done so much more, like uh, you it, said. It doesn't worry me or bother yeah. me. It's just I'm surprised. Yeah. And because uh, it was a very small 
thing within my career, and I got paid very little money at the time. Yeah. And uh, but it's interesting. You know. Did you stunt for Lloyd Bridges? No, I directed the show. A boy named Courtney Brown doubled Lloyd Bridges, and he lives in Fort Lauderdale also. Fort Lauderdale also. And uh, he doubled Lloyd all the way through it. Uh, did an excellent job. Is your son still in the business? Yeah, my oldest son uh, has a marine uh, company which he furnishes boats and marine equipment, coordinates marine projects for films, and he's working on the show now in Miami. Fantastic. My other son, he wants to become an assistant director, so he's working towards it. Have you got anything coming up, like maybe a book that you might be writing? We have a script that we wrote that someone bought an option on it, and right. uh, possibly they'll have the financing in four or five months. If so, I'll be directing it. Is it's it something that's going to be done like through a major studio then? Or? Uh, I'm not sure uh, how they're doing the financing. But, yeah. uh, I'm just involved with the creative end of it, is writing. Can you directing. say what kind of a movie it is? I don't really want to talk much yeah, about it. The title is The Vacation. Oh, okay. Well, I'll tell you, it's been great talking to you. I really okay. appreciate this. Okay, my pleasure. To, to meet one of the classic Universal monsters yeah. has blown me away, I'll yeah. tell you. I was very nervous in meeting you at first because I never got a chance to meet Lugosi and Karloff and Janie yeah. and I'm meeting you and you're one of that group, you know. Well, um, thank you. And, uh, what, let me ask you one other question. What's it feel like to be a horror legend? I know you've done many other things that everybody centers on. Uh, the What's it feel like? Like, let's say, for instance, when you're out with your family or whatever, it's Halloween, you see somebody wearing a creature in a black lagoon mask, how does that make you feel? I have really no feelings one way or the other. Really? No. Do you watch your films when they come on TV uh, later my, night? My, I have grandchildren, and uh, they enjoy them, and uh, I have watched them with them, but I don't just sit and watch them. No. You don't by chance have the old suit, do you? No, the suit I'm sure had rubber rotted years ago. Yes. I know they're making, as far as I know, a head, a creature uh -huh. head, because someone sent me one. Yeah. And I have it at home. So someone's making those. I understand the original molds at Universal Florida. I've seen it. It if could it's be. The real I don't one, know. yeah. I don't know. They took, you know, molds of your entire body yeah. in, in, in order to build a suit. And. Uh, they had those at Universal in L.A., and what happened to those, I have no idea. There was an appearance of the creature on an old Abbott and Costello TV show. Was that you? No, it wasn't. It wasn't no, you. It wasn't. Okay. I, okay. I, I remember hearing about that, but it yeah, wasn't. Yeah, I've seen it. it. It's wild. Yeah, no, it wasn't. Yeah. Okay, well, thank you very much. You're sure well. Great meeting. My pleasure. let you know I'm going to be recording it. Is that okay for our magazine? Yeah. Okay. I sure will. Thank you. Um, what I wanted to speak uh, mostly about today is getting uh, into some of your work with Ivan Tours and your work involving the Flipper movies and the series. <clears throat> okay, what I'd like to find out is could you tell us, uh, did Ivan Torres hire you as a second unit director for Sea Hunt because of your work, like on the creature? No, I started working uh, for Ivan in uh, Sea Hunt as a stunt uh, person. I see. And I doubled most of the bad guys underwater uh -huh. during the series. Uh huh. And then and towards the uh, last uh, year, uh, he hired me then as a second unit director. Ah. Uh -huh to the Bahamas and operated out of the Bahamas for a couple of years. Hmm. I see. Did you know uh, Ivan Torres before working with him on Sea Hunt? No. No. That's where I met him. I see. Was uh, Jack Arnold a friend of Ivan Torres? Not that I know of. They may have been friends, but I, I wasn't aware of it. Ah. 
in in your comparison, how would you compare Jack Arnold and Ivan Tours, both as a movie maker and as a man on a personal level? Well, it's kind of difficult. They're both very nice people and both uh, very talented in their fields. Mm -hmm. Which one did you find easier to work for? They were both easy to work for. They were both easy to work for. Okay. You said during our last interview that you had brought back the Dolphins for Silver Springs as a publicity stunt. Yes. Was that the first encounter you had ever had with the Dolphins? Uh, no, the first time I uh, saw Dolphins and were around them was, I was in high school at the time. And uh, we did a, a friend of mine who owned and operated Wakulla Springs near Tallahassee. Mm -hmm was assigned to do an underwater fashion show at uh, Marineland Studios in St. Augustine. Hmm. And I had worked there in the summer as a lifeguard. Mm -hmm. He asked me if I'd go over and assist him putting on this underwater fashion show. Hmm. And so we did. We put on the underwater fashion show. In the meantime, they had dolphins there, and a guy named Adolf Fong was a trainer. Mm -hmm. And we saw them going through their stunts and tricks and whatever. Hmm. And I was very impressed with them. So that's my first... So did you have any prior knowledge of dolphins or marine life, or did you take any marine biology courses in college before doing something like that? No. No. Okay. What is on uh, the differences in appearance and intelligence between the freshwater dolphin uh, you captured for Silver Springs and the Atlantic bottlenose dolphin used in Flipper? What, would, what is the difference between the appearances and the intelligence of them? The appearance is quite different mainly the head. The nose is much longer, and it has hair growing out of the nose, uh, fine hairs. Would that, be the, would that be the bottle nose or the Atlantic? No, this would be the freshwater dolphin. Oh, I see. Bufio, I forget how you spell it. Mm-hmm. And uh, their eyes are more like, uh, like an eraser on a pencil rather than, you know, the eyeball that we're used to seeing. Mm -hmm. And uh, they are pinkish in color. And there was another species of dolphin in the Amazon which we did not get that looks more like the uh, Atlantic bottlenose than the one we got. As far as intelligence is concerned, I'm assuming that it's about the same. Mm -hmm. But I'm not sure of that because I didn't really train the freshwater dolphins to the extent that we did with the saltwater dolphins. Mm -hmm. So you, would, you, would you be able to say that the bottlenose dolphin was easier to train then? Or? No, I would say they're probably about the same. I just say I did not train them. I see. To the extent that we train the saltwater dolphins. Uh huh. Were you ever concerned about being uh, in the water with dolphins or sharks or any of the other? The answer to sharks is yes. Anytime you work with them, you're concerned. Uh huh. Careful. As far as dolphins are concerned, no, not necessarily. However, dolphins are very strong and you can get hurt around them. Huh. You have to be careful. Yeah. Did you ever keep a dolphin at your home as you did with the uh, sea lion, which resulted in Salty? No, I didn't have any adequate place to keep one. I see. The sea lion I did. I built a pool for it. It was smaller and didn't take up as much space. Was there any preference as far as working with it compared to sea lions or dolphins? Which did you prefer to work with? I like working with both of them. You did. What did your wife think of? My home. Ah. Uh, in my backyard for, you know, three or four years. Wow. What did your wife think of you keeping the sea lion at your home? Well, I don't know that she liked it too well, but she put up with it. Did, she, did, did the sea lion ever cause, cause you any mischief? Yeah, well, one funny story was I was in the, I had her in the kitchen, and she was sitting up on the top of a, uh, sitting on a chair with her flippers up on the back of the chair. <laughs> the phone rang. Well, when the phone rang, the sea lion started yelling. And she didn't have that normal sea lion yell. It was kind of a scream type yell. Anyway, she was screaming while I was on the phone, and it was someone calling my wife. And I told her that she wasn't there, and I hung up. And then uh, maybe 15 minutes or so, there's a police car circling my house. I had a big house at that time. And this police car was circling my house. And uh, I thought it was strange because, you know, they have to come down the drive and whatever. So I opened the back door and I yelled out. I said, hey, what's going on? They said, oh, nothing. We're just, just checking the neighborhood. Mm. And I got a feeling this woman called and said I was killing my wife or something. <laughs>
<laughs> oh, gee. Was Salty both? Oh, wow. Was Salty both a film and TV series like Flipper was? Yes, it was. It was. Were you involved with Jack Arnold or Ivan Torres in the Salty film or series, or no, no, no. was it your own production? Ah. When when was the uh, movie Salty and the series? When when were those out? Several years ago. Huh? Do you can you remember what network they were on? Uh, the TV series. I don't remember. I don't remember. That's okay. Um, how different was your original story of Flipper from the first MGM movie? It was different. It, uh, we had uh, we didn't have the girl in the story. Mm -hmm. There were quite a few things that were different. However, the story was basically basically the same. Mm -hmm. Did you write any of the stories or scripts for the second film or the TV series? We didn't write the second feature. No. But we wrote uh, quite a few of the TV series shows. Oh. Were you or your brother-in-law involved in any of the, the rewrites or first drafts of the screenplay? Of the second movie? Yeah. No. I see. Did you also serve as an underwater director or a photographer for the films or series? Yes. You did. I did was a second unit director. Oh. Did you did you ever serve as a stuntman? Pardon me? An associate producer. Oh. Did you ever serve as a stuntman or an actor in any of the flippers? Yes. You did. Both the movies or series or could you tell us about your role as Dr. Clark Burton in Flipper's New Adventure? Well, you saw it on the screen, that's it. <laughs> what you see is what you get. What you see is what you get. <laughs> what other roles did you play? What other roles could you tell us uh, about that you played? Well, not many acting-wise. Uh-huh. I just, when, you know, when they, somebody they were short-handed or something, I feel. So you kind of like filled in on on those shows, the the movies and the and the series. And if we had some complicated stunts where the bad guy is fighting the dolphin or something, I filled in there because I was used to working with the dolphin and could get a little more out of her. Uh huh. Were there more than one dolphin used for the two films and the series? The first feature we used a, an animal named Mitzi. It was owned by a group and uh, a man and wife in um, the Keys, Florida the Keys. And they had kept the animal uh, in a little lagoon so that when they captured other animals, the other animals would see this one eat, you know, out of their hands and would get them feeding quicker. Mm. And they sold animals to aquariums at that time. And we were looking for an animal to play flipper. And we couldn't find any animals that would be friendly with people. Because all of the shows in those days were, you know, topside where a person was holding a fish up and they'd jump out and get in and they'd go through various routines. Mm -hmm. None of the animals were tame. Mm -hmm. And we passed by this place where they were and uh, asked them if they had any dolphins that were tame. And they said, well, we have this one we keep around and uh, we can touch her. I said, well, can we go see her? And I climbed in the water and the animal swam right up to me and put her arm, head right up under my arm. Mm -hmm. And I looked up at Ivan and I said, we got our animal. So then we spent another, I'd say, three months training uh, flipper. Mm -hmm. And I used my son because of the boy being in the show and he was about the right age. Mm -hmm. And uh, we went through various types of training that we weren't, in other words, we weren't trainers. Mm -hmm. And we had to learn with the dolphin. And as far as I know, no one had ever ridden a dolphin before, mm -hmm. except on a coin in Greek legend or something. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't figure out how to do it. And one day I was having uh, Mitzi retrieve some balls, and the bright idea went ding dong, and it said, well, why not get her to retrieve Ricky? So I told Ricky, I said, Ricky, when I throw a ball, you jump in the water. 
And so I faked throwing the ball. The dolphin took off. He jumped in the water, making a splash like a ball would. And she went over and tried to retrieve him by grabbing his blue jean shorts mm-hmm. by the buckle and, I mean, the loops, tried to pull him. And he reached over and grabbed her fin, and she towed him right to me. Mm-hmm. And from then on, we had a boy riding a dolphin. Wow. Kind of looked into that. Yeah. Did they use male or female dolphins, or did they, like, switch back and forth, or...? We used females only because I thought that, and I had always heard, that female animals are easier to work with than males. Mm-hmm. There, there was no other reason. Mm-hmm. Did the dolphin always perform on cue, or can you tell us of any difficult scenes that were required numerous retakes? Very few. Very few. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> Let me ask you, uh, was the SPCA required to be on the set at all times as they are, say, today when animals are involved? It wasn't as critical, but of course we were very um, animal conscious because we all loved animals. Uh-huh. But, uh, no, it was not as strict as it is today. Uh-huh. Often, especially during the Flipper series, there was a strange mix of land and marine life, including elephants, monkeys, and even alligators. Was there any problems that you encountered or anyone encountered uh, with the dolphins and, and the mixture of the other animals? No, not at all. Okay. They didn't get along. In other words, they would separate quickly or they would play. Yeah. So there was there ever any... Uh, uncooperative animal that you ever had, that they ever had on the show, or you ever had to deal with? Uncooperative bears. Yeah. working with them, and they'd take off. It would take us three days to catch them again. Wow. Did you have any input as to the choice of Chuck Connors to play the original Porter Rex? No. No, that wasn't any of your... I see. Why, um... Do you know why he didn't repeat the role for the second film? Why who? Chuck Connors? Yeah. I have no idea. He probably wasn't even asked. He wasn't even asked. I said I don't know for sure. I see. Okay. Did the original story that you wrote with your brother-in-law include the character of Porter Ricks? Yes. It did. Which actor portrayed Porter Ricks closer to your original concept? For the story, Chuck Connors did, of course. Uh-huh. But see, the second feature was very different, uh, and they wanted to change the character of Porter Riggs somewhat uh-huh. to mold with the series. Because I think it was two days after we finished the second feature, we started the series. <clears throat> Which actor portrayed um, Porter Riggs closer to your uh, original conception? Uh-huh. But, uh huh. It, it was written. In other words, if Brian Kelly had played the part, then it would have been him. Right. An actor is an actor. Yeah. In other words, the character was altogether different as Porter Ricks in the TV series than Porter Ricks in the first feature. Mm hmm. In the I... second feature, he had very little to do. Ah. Do you feel the character of Porter Ricks has any of Raku Browning in him? You never thought of it that way? Did you ever have a desire to be a Marine Park Ranger as, as Porter Ricks was? No. And you said that your son uh, was involved in swimming with the dolphins and... He, uh, he, he was with me in training uh-huh. in the first, uh, for the first feature, and then he doubled Luke and the underwater sequences. Oh. Oh. Were you friends on a personal basis with Chuck Connors or Brian Kelly? I was more friendly with Brian Kelly than Chuck Connors because I got to know Brian better because, you know, we ran four years. Mm-hmm. It wasn't just one shot. And Brian and I became very close friends mm. and still are. Oh, great. Can you tell us of any, like, practical jokes or bloopers or anything that, that was done on the set? Well, not really. It was, you know, little things like you have not any nothing. Right. Were the, uh, the actors, uh, like Porter Ricks and that, were they good swimmers? They became good swimmers. 
They became good swimmers. Luke and Tommy became real good swimmers. Brian was a good swimmer to begin with. Uh huh. But Luke and Tommy became very good swimmers. How was Luke helping found for the role of Sandy? I'm not sure. Uh, I haven't cast him out of New York. Oh. And also, uh, the other boy uh, was cast out of New York, Tommy Norton. Do you, um, do you remember how old they were when they were both cast for, for the series or the original film? Uh-huh. Uh, I'm not sure of, of uh, Tommy's age. Uh-huh. Did he fit uh, the original version of the character of Sandy that you had, that you had wrote? Pretty much. Pretty much. And you said that, that they became real good swimmers then. They had to, like, would they had to be taught for the role? No, they could swim. I just say they became good swimmers and divers. Mm-hmm. Was, were they both comfortable when working with dolphins? Had they ever worked with them before, or...? Yeah. How do you feel that uh, Ivan Torres uh, adding a second son for Porter Ricks with the character of Bud played by Tommy Norton? I don't think it made any difference. Yeah. It was fine. Uh-huh. Give you more, um, you know, please have dialogue and whatever, not just talk to a dolphin or a pelican. Mm-hmm. Um, so everybody pretty much... Uh, you know, was used to to the animals, or or became used to them in that. Then, yeah. uh huh. Can you tell us uh, of any disagreements or jealousies that uh, might have been between Luke and Tommy during the Flipper series or the movies? I wasn't aware of any. He wasn't aware of any. So then, Tommy pretty much got. A, they both pretty much got along pretty well with each other. Yeah. Oh, great. Was there ever a real attraction or romance between Luke Halpin and Cheryl Miller? I don't think so. No? Do you ever, did you ever think the boys thought of Brian Kelly as a second father? They might have. I, I, I couldn't say yes or no, but I think they respected Brian a great deal. Uh -huh. What is your opinion on the relationship portrayed between Porter and his sons where much more... Um, were much more realistic than today's sugar and sweet type shows like Full House? I think the, the relationship between the father and the boys and Flipper were more like the 1941 United States, mm -hmm. not today. Mm -hmm. I don't think kids and parents uh, are that na naive or that... Uh, Close. Whatever. Yeah. What was the shooting schedule like for, for the Flipper series? Tough. We'd shoot, we'd shoot sometime. We got to where we could shoot a show in two and a half days. Wow. Wow. That was pretty good. <laughs> it was a half hour show. Uh huh. What was the series budget compared to that of the two feature films? Much lower, of course. Uh huh. With, with the smaller budget, do you feel the series was as good as the two feature films? Well, in their way, they were. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. While Porter had many girlfriends in the series, he only had, he had a wife in the first feature film. Was there ever any talk of giving him a wife again? No. No? Do you think the story played better with him as a widow with two sons? Well, I don't know. It played. I mean, I can't say it was better or worse. <laughs> Were the films or series ever shot in an on-set water tank, or were they all shot in the open ocean? Well, a lot of the dolphin stuff around the home was shot in the Sequorium in the lagoon. Mm -hmm. And all of the underwater and some of the topside mm -hmm. uh, was shot in the Bahamas. All of the underwater was shot in the Bahamas. Mm -hmm. There was an exception to that in the first feature. We did a dolphin shark fight in the main tank, part of it, in the main tank at the Miami Seaquarium. Hmm. I know that a lot of the scripts involved hurricanes and tropical storms. Did real life weather conditions here in Florida or the Bahamas ever cause a problem during the filming? Oh, yeah. They did. We had problems with hurricanes. A particular one, uh, Rico Feldman was my head trainer at the time. Mm hmm. And we were at the Seaquarium and this hurricane was coming. Mm hmm. We, we shot right up to long as we could and then we wrapped so everybody could go home and <coughs> take care of their houses and their families 
and uh, he and I stayed back, and we decided to leave uh, Susie, which was Flipper, in the lagoon at this aquarium. And then as the storm seemed to worsen and the radio um, predictions of what it might do as far as flooding is concerned, we decided we had to move her. And there was only he and I there. Mm -hmm. weighed, you know, quite a bit. And he and I alone caught her, put her in a hammock, and carried her to a tank. And how we did it, I don't know, but we were able to do it. Wow. And uh, put her in the tank so she'd be safe. Yeah. About how many number of dolphins was used between the uh, the, the films and the, and the series? Do you uh, know? Mitzi was used in the first feature. Right. And then when we started the second feature and the TV series, uh -huh. we made a deal with the Miami Seaquarium. They would furnish the dolphins. Uh -huh. We would train them and use them in the feature, but however, they owned them. Oh. And uh, we trained uh, the first one, which was, I trained the first one, which was Susie. Uh-huh. We used her in the series for several years, and then we switched to another animal, which was Kathy. Mm -hmm. uh, I hired Rick O'Fellman used to work for the Sequorium, and uh, I hired him uh, uh, after we started the series, and he tra helped train the, the rest of the animals. Mm. And then we got two more trainers as well. Wow, so there was a lot of trainers then between the two films and the series. Yeah, it's time-consuming. You have to, you know, yeah. when everybody goes home, the dolphins are still there. Yeah. Somebody has to stay with them and take care of them. Yeah. So. Which is your favorite of the two films, and what of the uh, TV episodes is your favorite? The first one, of course. Uh huh. And do you have a special or a favorite TV episode? No, I like I mean, ones I did. I like best. <laughs> <laughs> I don't blame you on that. I don't blame you a bit on that. <laughs> Which of the TV episodes did you direct or appear in as an actor or stuntman? Do you know? Which one? Yeah. Or can you, like, give us a, a majority or percentage of, you know? Well, I don't know. I did. I, every other week or so, I'd do one. Ah. Oh. Oh. You mentioned in our last interview with you that guest star Hunts Hall was always concerned about the Everglades being a city-type guy. Could you elaborate more on what the concerns were about or any stories of him while working with him, what he was like to work with? He would be a concern anybody would have that came from New York and you threw him in the middle of the Everglades. <laughs> <laughs> they would think there's a snake or an alligator right around the corner. Uh -huh. And uh, of course he had that feeling. But then after about the first day, he was a good old swamp rat. <clears throat> and, uh, did everything he was supposed to do and did it well and was a nice guy and easy to work with. Was he, was he pretty comical? Yeah, he, he was very humorous. Yeah. Were you uh, a fan of the Bowery Boys or the East Side Kid movies? I remember them. Yeah. Uh, I enjoyed them when I was younger, you know, as a kid. And uh, I remembered him uh, from the show. Uh-huh, uh-huh. You also worked with uh, a lot of celebrities, soon-to-be celebrities, like Burt Reynolds and things like that. Can you tell us what he was like to work with? I know Burt for a lot of years. Bert's easy to work with. Um, today I don't know, but uh, then he was very easy to work with. He worked in our uh, Gentle Ben show and mm -hmm. Flipper and shows like that. And I did another show years later. I did the battle sequences for a movie he was starring in called Lucky Lady. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's the last time I worked with him. Mm -hmm. well, shot in Mexico. Wow. What other guest uh, that you, that was in the series or the uh, movies and that that you particularly liked working with? Well, I never had a problem with any actors. Uh huh. I always got along well with them. Can you can you give us some of the uh, names of some of them that maybe you know started started out with that and became more celebrity as time went on? Uh, that maybe we're not aware of that was involved with them. There's several. Uh huh. I can't give you their names. Yeah. Are there any story topics that you would have liked to have seen done on the TV series? Well, yeah, there were a lot of scripts that were never shot. There were. Oh, yeah. So there's a lot of unseen episodes in that that aren't currently on, say, Nickelodeon in that, right? No, no, I say they're not unseen episodes. They were never shot from script. Oh, okay. Scripts that have never been, were never shot, never produced, never filmed. Oh, okay. So that were shot or shown. Can you name some of the show topics that were never shot? No, not offhand. 
Not offhand, you can't? Okay. Can you tell us why did the show come to an end? I think it had to do with financing. Financing? Yeah, I was shooting the show for a small amount of money compared to other shows that he was competing with, mm -hmm. such as Jackie Gleason's and so forth. Uh huh. And he tried to up the money, and they wouldn't up the money, so he just quit making it. I think that was the reason. Mm hmm. If the show would have continued, how do you think it would have changed to, from then till now? Well, of course, the boys would have become adults. Right. You think maybe, like, their, their kids would have replaced or taken over or possibly grown into the movie role? Or? Probably. Well, you know they're doing a feature now. I heard uh, that they're doing a feature. They're shooting it in the Bahamas now. Uh-huh. And they're going to do a TV series, I think. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. I see. I, you know, I had heard that they were doing a feature. Um, I've also heard that uh, uh, Luke Halpin has gotten a cameo I don't know. In, in, in the feature is what, you know, that's what I had last heard. Um, but um, what I wanted to ask you is, do you feel Ivan Torres yourself and possibly Jack Arnold might have been trailblazers for films like Andre or Free Willy? Possibly. Possibly. We did a, a killer whale show years ago called Mamu. Shot in um, Seattle. It was the first. Uh, I think it was the first killer whale in captivity. Oh. Have you seen any of the, either of those films? Yes. Do Do you like either one of those? Well, they're all right. They're all right. Yeah. What do you think of the recent? What do you think of the recent? protest against dolphins or whales being used in films or held in captivity for attractions? Well, I agree and I disagree. Uh -huh. Where I agree is if they want to protect the dolphins, they should protect them in areas where they really need protection, mm -hmm. such as when they go tuna fishing, the nets catch thousands of dolphins and they all die. Mm -hmm. The aquariums, most of them, have adequate places for dolphins, and the dolphins they don't capture too many more because the dolphins uh, give birth and they replenish their own stock. Mm. And the aquariums give people from all over the United States a chance to see dolphins because most people don't go out in the ocean and look at dolphins. Mm -hmm. Learn to like them or whatever. Mm -hmm. They also learn a lot about the dolphins so that they can help the wild dolphins when it's necessary or when they can to help um, have them recover from beaching or whatever. So I'm not opposed to aquariums if they're well taken care of and they have adequate space for the animals. Mm -hmm. I think it's a good idea. For roadside shows where they take people in and let them ride dolphins and all of this sort of thing, I'm opposed to because somebody is going to get hurt. Mm -hmm. but also, I don't know that the dolphins are adequately taken care of. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you have a pet dolphin now? No. no? Never, had one. Never had one, huh? <laughs> Do you ever swim with them still? She is. Wow. What uh, what happened to the uh, dolphin used in the series after the show ended? And do you ever visit him or them? They used them in shows, and uh, then some of them died a natural death. Mm. And uh, I haven't seen them in years. I mean, I mean, I don't know if they're all still alive now or not. Answer this question. Wait for one second. I <laughs> Let me. Uh, memorabilia from the movies or TV shows you worked on that you keep as reminders? Not really. No? no. Wow. Pictures, I think, and then the uh, one other question I wanted to ask you was has there been any further developments on the project you spoke to us about the vacation? Yes and no. The lady that was producing it who was a very close friend of mine um, Linda McGowan passed away. Oh. And, and uh, it was a shock to all of us. So there's been, you know, considerable delay on the, the, the project. So. Oh, wow. Let me, um, let me ask you, um, is there ever, or, or are you possibly ever thinking about it or have thought about uh, putting a book out in reference to your involvement with Flipper and, and the series? I've been asked a couple of times years ago uh -huh. about doing something, and I've just never done it. 
Uh huh. So what does what does the future hold now for for Raku Browning? Great, great. Listen, I want to thank you for taking the time with me today and and extending this uh, interview for us for Film Facts. And I'd like to ask you, how many of these magazines uh, would you like to receive so that I can get that many sent to you? Okay. And then if I could also... <laughs> okay, I sure will. I sure will. And what I'd like to ask you is, I know when I spoke to you up in Orlando, you had mentioned about you had uh, given some slides or some 8 by 10s that were used before with you uh, in the magazine that you never received back. No, that wasn't it. Uh, I did a story for, I can't remember his name, um, Ted Akuda or Mike, uh, it's, it's Ted Akuda or um, Michael Stein are the uh, editors. No, it wasn't the editors, it was a writer. Oh, it was a writer, okay. Anyway, I gave him a bunch of photographs, he sent them back, there was no problem. Oh, he did send them back to you. He sent me a magazine, had, this was on the creature stuff, I think. Oh, he did you? Me, he sent me a magazine with some pictures in it. Uh-huh. I asked him if I could get copies of them, but I never got them. Oh. Oh, okay. I see. I see. No, he the oh, okay. Great. Well, let me ask you this. Would you, by chance, be able to help us out on uh, any pictures in that of the Flipper, mo uh, the Flipper movies or the series for the magazine, uh, uh, knowing that we would be able to send them back to you once we're done with those? Yeah. The reason I say it might be tough, I think the only things I have... Or con you know what contacts are? Uh, no. In other words, they, they run a sheet of contacts. They're not 8 by 10s they're small. Oh, okay. And there's no negative. Oh, okay. And I think all I have is the contacts. However, I don't own the pictures. The pictures, are, I guess, were owned by, uh, I don't know whether it was Ivan Tours or MGM or whoever. Uh-huh. And I don't know that I have the rights to send them out to anybody. Right, okay. Okay. Well, once again, I thank you very much for the time that you've given us here, and I will make sure that you get a couple copies of this when it comes out. Okay, okay thank you. Bye-bye.